Hi guys, it's your girl Tiara here. So, if you have been watching my videos, you know that I said that I was going to do my next video on postpartum depression. Now, um, before I get into this video, I want to give a big, big, big shout out to all the mothers out there. Like, we are out here doing our thing. You know, being there for our children, being a mom is a lot, but we are getting through it one day at a time. So, again, big shouts out to the moms out there, okay? Now, postpartum. Like, I, you know, this is my first child, my first baby. Um, I really didn't think that I would go through postpartum depression. Like, I really didn't think that I would go through it. But I ended up going through it. Now, my postpartum depression, everybody, you know, goes through their own stages of it or how they deal with it, how they go through it. Some women get anxiety. Someone, some women are suicidal. Some women just, um, you know, they don't want to talk about it. Um, just different stuff. Because when I, when I went through postpartum, I started to look, look it up. And my behavior for me was I always wanted to be alone and I didn't want to be on my phone. I didn't want nobody calling me. I didn't want them texting me and stuff like that. So I would say my postpartum started out of nowhere because, number one, my daughter was born early, 10 weeks early. She was born at 30 weeks. She was two pounds. And I had a C-section and everything was so rushed. Like, the way that I I thought my pregnancy would go, it didn't. Like, I had a semi-rough pregnancy um, due to the, to the preeclampsia and stuff. And all throughout my pregnancy, like, I was mostly sick and going through headaches. And, and then, you know, then the preeclampsia, like, it was a lot um, for me, um, you know, emotionally and physically. But I knew that being a mom and being pregnant, that's just the things that it came with. Um, now, so, I had episodes, I would say, ever since my daughter was born. Because I would go through it, but no one would know about it. Like, I was so, so sad. Like, I blamed myself for a very long time that... It was my fault that my daughter was in the NICU. Like, it was my fault that she was born early and stuff like that. And, you know, to help myself cope with it, I just said, okay, Tiara, if you are going to be sad about your daughter being born, she didn't ask to be here, number one. Number two, it's not your fault. Stop blaming yourself. Because if it wasn't for my OB and for God, like, we would not be here today. So it was like... I cannot bring this sad energy around myself, towards myself, and all this guilt towards myself with my daughter being in the hospital. Like, I had to think otherwise. Like, how would I go on about my day just still being sad? Like, girl, your daughter is in a hospital. Why are you being sad for? Like, she's alive. Like, my daughter didn't have to have no surgeries while she was in the NICU. She didn't have any major complications. And, you know, for her to be two pounds, like, she was fighting for me. Like, I say she was fighting for me because the more she fought, she fought to be here. And if she's fighting, I should be fighting too. Like, she was fighting for life. Like, my daughter, like, I feel like she really, really, really helped me through the situation. Like, and God, like, if it wasn't for God, like, me and my daughter would not be here, like, we, a lot of moms who get preeclampsia and their baby, they die. Like, me and my daughter could have died. Like, and that just always was in the back of my head. Like, wow, we couldn't have been here today and stuff like that. But it was just the fact of her being in the hospital. Like, then I used to see, you know, of course, social media is, it's 2021. Social media is, is there. And um, I started to envy people who had healthy pregnancies and they get to come home with their babies. And even when I used to go visit my daughter in that hospital, the L&D section is towards where the NICU is. 
So I see moms coming home with their babies. They just had their baby, you know, just to, what's the regular two days after you have your baby, you get to go home. Like, I'm like, wow, I didn't get to get that. And I'm like, I cannot be this evil and envious person. Like, I cannot be that way. And I cannot be this way. So I was feeling very, very envy and looking at moms on social media with their baby, healthy babies, you know, and stuff like that. And that I just felt so bad. Like, I felt so sad and depressed inside. Like, then I was feeling kind of tired. I was feeling overwhelmed because, mind you, I still had to pump milk every day. But with my daughter being so small, pumping was my my motivation to get my daughter out of the hospital because she was two pounds. And, you know, going to the hospital every day, hospital every day, pumping every two to three hours. I got to make sure I'm eating. And I really want to eat because I was sad. Um, then, you know, I gotta, you know, keep the household okay. Then you have family and friends texting you every single day. Not saying that was a bad thing that they were doing. I appreciated it. But because I was going through my old thing, like, I didn't want to be bothered. So, you know, I still, um, I still was texting back and communicating back, calling back, everything like that. But then just one day, like, I was just so over it. I did not want to talk to nobody, like, not even my mama. And I talked to my mom every single day. Like, no matter what, I talked to my mom every day. So, one day, um, the hospital called me. They like, oh, um, you know, Malia's, um, they called me out of nowhere. It was weird. Like, it's, I was just like, something is wrong. They was like, okay. Your daughter health is declining a little bit. We need to put her on this medication so that she can get better. And um, please, we need your consent to do it. So can we please just do it for her? Um, we're calling to get your consent, da, 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 whatever. So I said, okay, okay, just do it. Do whatever that she needs, whatever. I was so freaking sad. Like, my baby health was declining. Like, she was doing so, so good. Like... I think about that time she was about four weeks old listen when I say I was sad I was so sad like all the emotions that I was feeling already from having her and all the depression like I feel like my postpartum depression got worse when that happened so then uh, I would say like a week after she was supposed to come home so when your baby's in a NICU they do a car seat test so they were gonna do the car seat test. Okay, okay, we're gonna do the car seat test. Once she passed, she goes home, right? And I already spoke on it that when she passed, that's it. She's not gonna be here no more. She's gonna be home with me. So that she didn't pass. So they said, okay, we have to watch her. We have to monitor her for a week. And there's just one day I just I'm not talking to nobody. Still, I'm not. I can't do it. So I said, okay, Sierra. I sat myself down I said I'm not gonna talk to anyone I took myself to the hospital and this is part this is when she got to an area where they had a couch um, pull out bed in in her room so I went to the hospital I packed my stuff I packed and then they had free food for breastfeeding mothers so I went I went there all day I and I put my phone on do not disturb. I didn't want to be bothered with anybody. Like all I wanted to do was be around my daughter. And I felt like that was the only way for me to deal with it and just talk to God because I really was lost. Like I really didn't know what to do. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know how to feel. Like I didn't know what to do at first to make me feel better. So I just did what was best for me at the moment. So you know, just being at the hospital with my daughter, it was the only thing that mattered to me at that point. Like, nothing else mattered. And I didn't care about how other people felt because nobody can feel, nobody can feel how you feel for you. Like, only you are going to feel how you feel. And me being a new mom, I realized that, you know, you do what's best for you and your child and since she was in the hospital i just felt like i have to take care of myself if i don't take care of myself who's going to take care of her who's going to give her a breast milk 
and stuff and I just had to keep my well-being because again if I'm over here sad and depressed and not doing well emotionally I'm not gonna get any milk so me being around my daughter that's the only thing that made me happy and um, like I said I feel like I wanted to do this video because some people don't talk about postpartum and it is happening every single day like I read that there's at least 20% of women can get postpartum depression after their ch child is being born in the first year and I didn't think that it would be me but it ended up being me and um, I would say to all the moms out there honestly like take your time don't stress yourself out try not to overwhelm yourself like like I started to make a schedule on certain things when it comes to my daughter and I feel like that's helped me because Malia you waking up okay so yeah I feel like being having a schedule or having a, a thing a set thing in your mind of what you're gonna do for the day like I had to tell myself I cannot worry about the household so much I cannot stress that enough like because she comes first my daughter comes first so if the dishes or the laundry doesn't get done sometimes it just can't get done because your baby needs your attention your baby needs you your baby needs your attention and your love and of course the breast milk or they need to eat so or if you're doing formula they need your formula they need you to feed them they need you to change their diaper like they need you to play with them like it's a lot but you know you just gotta got you just gotta get through it one day at a time and um you know I found myself crying a lot I felt very very lost and you know I just like I said I got through it one day at a time and I'm happy that I'm not dealing with postpartum depression anymore because I was really 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 devastated like and I'm really really happy that I got through it because when my daughter came home I'm like why was I sad for like she was fighting every single day like what were you sat for and the way how my whole pregnancy was like it was just it was scary like my everything was really really quick like you know and um with COVID too like I didn't get to celebrate her like I wanted to like I didn't get to have a real baby shower I didn't get to have a real gender reveal like I wanted like I had planned my whole pregnancy and for things to not turn out that way and then how she was born like it was it was a lot like it was really really a lot like the most part to me that was important and that was very sad was how she was born and what she had to go through all the needles all the testing all the doctors and stuff like that all the different tests they have to do on babies when they're in the NICU like it's a lot and then I still had to go through my own health issues because of the preeclampsia like it was a lot like I don't know how many times I went to the doctor to the gyno after I had my daughter like it was like me and her are still going through little health issues here and there um but we're getting through it and you know I'm just thankful to be here and I'm thankful that my daughter is very very healthy and stuff like that and you know it's just motherhood is the one like I would not take it back for anything like I really enjoy motherhood like yes it can be um, kind of stressful sometimes and stuff like that but I love motherhood like I really really enjoy it I love it like when she looks at me and I give her a hug and a kiss like she smiles like no other thing in this world and that just makes me feel so good like it lets me know that I'm doing my job and you know I feel like this was something I'm glad that I was able to share about and talk about because, like I said, most women won't share, but I'm not afraid to share my story. And um, if you haven't um, yet, um, Malia's waking up. If you haven't yet, you can check out my um, my C-section NICU experience vlog and you'll see about how she was born and stuff like that so you can get a better feel of what I'm talking about in this video about my daughter being born and stuff um so you get an idea and be more relative to it but um i'm gonna wrap up this video because malia is waking up from her nap okay mommy coming 
So I want to thank you guys so, so much for watching this video. And stay tuned for more. Oh, and if you haven't, please subscribe. Please like. Please comment. Please share. Like, I would really, really, really appreciate it. And look who's up from her nap. Malia, say hi. She usually looks at the camera, but okay okay like i said thank you again for watching this video and see you later bye